Hey Warbles. It's gone. How's it going? It's gone. Anyway, uh, do a malt liquor video. You know you're making a malt liquor video when it says malt liquor on the can. But, uh, should you be... Whoa, well, one second. Snap! Uh, should you be, uh, on the far side of the world, uh, warbles, um, then a fella has to make do. Um, because you're right about, uh, how much alcohol is in your beverage. Let's, let's sip it. Because that's what, that's what technically makes it a malt liquor. And if you're, if you're on the flip side of the world, you know, a fella has to do what he can. <laughs> but here in, uh, here in North America, uh, with a few very brave uh, beverage makers that just write it flat out on the can, or your, or your 40 ounce bottle preferably, uh, they're standing up and they're representing. Because sure, you could have uh, you could have this, that, and the other thing. It technically is a malt liquor, but uh, does it say it on the label? Um, and if it doesn't say it on the label, why not? Why doesn't it? Perception, perception is the reason. They don't uh, they don't want the oh they don't want the. Uh, I'm glad there's a railing here. They don't want the uh, the malt liquor negative connotations, which uh, they have. They do have. They have a lot of negative connotations. Uh, but anyway, I didn't. I didn't actually video you to talk about uh, um, the malt liquor necessarily, but I wanted to share a beer with you and uh, talk about uh, Team Taser Bigfoot and uh, uh, telepathy and unusual occurrences and uh, another example of, uh, of Earl having a high level of skill at something and yet behaving in a completely goofy manner just like when I got all karate choppy on those uh, Russian sailors because they were Russian Navy I forgot to mention that the last time they weren't just like you know people working on boats they were they were navy. Um, where to start? Oh, the, basically the telepathy, telepathy thing. Um, somebody w uh, was behind me, and uh, I was walking uh, out in the open by myself. I thought by myself, um, and I turned around and uh, they were looking at me. And I waved, and they waved. Uh, and later, I saw him like, "Hey, earlier when you were looking at me, where did you did you call out?" And he's like, "No, I, I thought you were too far to call out to, but I was thinking about calling out to you right when you turned around, so I just waved." And I thought, "Well, you didn't make a sound, yet I felt I needed to turn around right at that point in time that you were thinking about calling out to me." So that was that uh, that very unusual. Um, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? Or it does. Um, so th there was that instance. And I can think of more, but that'll do for now. Um, oh, uh, the next two stories involve skiing. I was, uh, I was skiing, and I just, I just got to the level of skill where I was starting to experiment with jumping. And I was kind of getting the hang of it. I was being real careful. Uh, and uh, I uh, I had saw these guys working on a jump with shovels and whatnot, like they were really working it, and they were doing flips and things like that, and uh, helicopters and uh, funky, cool ski stuff. And so I didn't I didn't go over there. Uh, but then at the end of the evening, uh, they left, and uh, I told one of my friends, I'm like, hey, I'd like to I'd like to ski by that one uh, ski jump those guys were at, and uh, just try it out. And so I went very carefully. I was going, I was going relatively slow as I was skiing along up to it, and I skied it up, went off the edge, and it it 
lifted me up into the air and I sailed through the air farther than I've ever jumped before. I felt absolutely comfortable and completely confident um, as I then just kind of landed perfectly and uh, sped off to uh, uh, the ski lift. And uh, my friend came up behind me and said, oh man, that was amazing. I'm like, yeah, that's a perfect, that's a perfect jump. And uh, it was time to go. The guy running the lift said, uh, you have to hop on now because we're shutting it down. And I'm like, let's just do one more run. I want to hit that, uh, I want to hit that jump flat out. And uh, so we got to the top and I, remi I reminded my friend once again, like, I'm going to ski ahead of you. Uh, and there was a bunch of people gathering out there for the last run down. Um, I'm like, is that okay if we don't ski together? Because I want to I hit that going fast. He's like, oh yeah, I'll try to keep up. And uh, so we go racing down, and I'm, I'm really accelerating. And uh, uh, there you go. So I'm, I'm really accelerating. And uh, as I come around uh, the last leg, and there's the jump, um, it's all deserted, the whole ski, uh, you know, everyone's leaving. Uh, so everything's deserted, except there's one guy down there, and he's standing by the jump. And I'm skiing faster and faster and faster, and it's starting to come to my attention that he's not standing near the jump, he's standing on top of the jump. Um, and so I ski at him. So what I'm thinking is the skis are across the top that he'll just ski out of the way um, and he's got like his poles planted and he's smiling right at me and uh, I get the feeling this guy's not going to budge and so right as I reach the bottom of the jump I swing off to the right and I look up at him I'm giving him a dirty look and all the while he's smiling down at me and like wind is in my ears and it's that kind of like level where you get bouncing along a surface so much that your eyes kind of quiver a little bit. Um, and uh, so wind in my ears, just flying away. And, and, and this guy said in a conversational voice, I could barely hear him. Uh, he said my first, uh, my first and last name in a conversational voice, as if he was reading it. But it wasn't like... Uh, you know, hey, or uh, it was almost it was like he was reading it off a list. It was like conversational, if I had just said Mickey's malt liquor. Um, I'm just reading it. And, uh, and I really look at this guy for a moment, and I'm able to perceive uh, that he's dressed kind of old school uh, skiing. Like his poles actually didn't look aluminum. They actually looked uh, wooden. It looked like he had wooden ski poles. And he had like that kind of knit sweater. It almost, you know what it reminded me of, like old videos I see of uh, European ski resorts um, where there isn't a lot of nylon and stuff like that. It's a lot of natural material and whatnot. And uh, this kind of confident uh, smile this guy had on his face. Um, and so I went, I was going, I've tried to stop, but I was going really fast. And that right as he passed that jump, um, the trail spins and drops because it's trying to get you're trying to gather speed uh, to either make it to the lodge or make it to the ski jump. I mean uh, lift. And so when I finally was able to stop, my uh, friend who's following me down comes whipping around the corner and he slides to a stop. And I said, "Did you see a guy just right around the corner there?" And he's like, "He's like, no, the, uh, it was empty. There was nobody there." And I'm like, "No, there was a guy standing on the uh, on the jump." And he's like, "Well, maybe he." went down and into the trees, but I didn't see anybody. Uh, and so a handful of people came down, because we were on the last run, and uh, it wasn't that guy. None of, none of those people that came down were that guy I saw. And I was like thinking, I got, I want to get to the bottom of this. You know what I thought, actually? I thought it might be a teacher. It might be somebody I, that was, uh, I hadn't, you know, I took a class from. And so I, I popped out of my uh, skis and slowly hiked around that corner. Nobody there. Um, so here's, here's the thing. That makes no sense that this guy vanished. Um, unless, like my buddy said, he might have gone off on tree skiing. 
uh, at, at right as it got dark, uh, but there's no lights there too. Um, it strikes me that I was going, I was going to hit this jump that was beyond my skill level, going faster than I'd ever gone before, and uh, almost like some angel, some skiing angel, got a list saying, um, "Go stop uh, Earl um, from breaking his back." And all you have to do is stand right in this one spot, and it's all going to be good. And his life will be changed forever, or it won't be changed forever. Ooh. It was weird. All right, so now, uh, now we'll get to the point where I was telling you about uh, high level of skill. Uh, high level of skill and, uh, and goofiness. So... Uh, I'm uh, I'm going to go uh, out of bounds on a ski resort, uh, and there's people there to keep you from going out of bounds, and uh, so I'd kind of worked it out, um, and I'd actually we I'd kind of practiced uh, the out of bounds run, like going out into trees where you're not supposed to be, and uh, um, right as you right as you go into this place where I was going to go out of bounds. Um, there was a really sharp uh, access road for uh, snow cats and stuff like that. It was it was barely usable for skiers. Um, a lot of times you'd have to you have to pull yourself uh, down that road. Um, and so I'd I'd uh, I'd stop with my friend uh, that we we're gonna ski down and we we're gonna go out of bounds. And uh, there were some other guys uh, going, Hey, do you want to run with us? And I'm like, Well, we're actually got our own thing planned. And I'm like, Well, what do you got planned? I'm like, Oh, we're gonna go we're gonna go out of bounds and do some. Uh, tree skin or right as we leave we even worked out a way to ski out of bounds all the way to our car in case we got chased um, and here's the thing about getting chased by ski patrol the people that are on ski patrol can ski better than you could ski it's just it's just gonna be the case uh, they don't have uh, they don't have goofballs that can't ski on ski patrol So, uh, me and this gang of people who I don't know, except for one, start heading off, off, uh, off course. Uh, basically, the, actually, the run starts on a closed-down run. Uh, it's pitch black. It's all roped off. And then you go out of bounds, um, which will get you, like, your ticket removed. Uh, so you can't ride the lift again. Uh, so, boom, all we go. And it was kind of fun. We're all hooting and hollering. And then all of a sudden, from... Uh, okay, these, these guys are still. They're motionless ski patrol, and there's a lot of them. And from their stationary position, as we go whipping by them, they immediately get behind us, accelerate, and join us. Um, instantly. And it just occurred to me, these people ski better twice as good as I can ski. I can ski pretty good at this point in time in, uh, in my, uh, my ski history. Um, Actually, I had uh, the mountain nearby. I had a lift. I had lift tickets for every single resort on it, um, year round. <laughs> and uh, so, a ski pro guy is right next to me, and he's like saying, "He's like saying, stop, buddy. You know, it's, it's, you're, it's all over for you." And uh, I don't stop. I'm like going, well, you know what? I might be as good as the ski patrol. Let's find out. <laughs> uh, so I tuck. And I've got really long skis. And uh, I get to some sort of insane degree of speed. And uh, I could barely make out that the guy I'm trying to get away from has only dropped back about four feet behind me. And so I get right to that point where I was talking to you about where uh, there's like an access road. And then right, that was right where I dive into the forest and go off, uh, you know, off course, uh, out of bounds. Except I'm going too fast for that. Uh, but I think, what if I hit that access road? Actually, it even kind of goes uphill a little bit. Um, so I'd actually, I'd be able to bleed off some of this insane speed I got. It's pitch black, too. Um, and so I start, and I'll, oh, since it so it goes uphill a little bit, and then it comes down and accesses that uh, that pathway. 
um, you can't really make it out as you're coming down this black uh, valley. Um, I'm sure the guy knew, knew it was there, but like, I don't think he knew enough about how fast he was going and you might not have put it together that it was there right then. You know what I mean? Like, I actually did escape him. Because I just suddenly just dug in my edges, did this wicked sharp moon-like, uh, like, you know, sliver uh, turn straight into the black forest. Except I hit it just perfectly. I hit that access road and shot uphill. And I'm going just faster than you could believe. And I believe, also... I've escaped the ski patrol. I'm pretty much a ski god. And right as I get to the end of that road, still going really fast. And the lights, there, there's lights. I'm like, oh, I'm going to blend into the crowd. Uh, right as I come into the lights, I realize that access uh, road has rope been roped off. Oh, I forgot to mention a part of my uh, my equipment, but you'll, you'll you'll get to know what it is in a moment. Um, so I'm am flying at this rope at a million miles an hour, and right as it comes, I just tuck down as hard as I can instantly, get my head almost between my knees, and and crouch down, and the rope goes right across the top of my head, and I'm like, yes, and I stand up feeling like a god and almost at the same time I feel something grabbing a hold of my backpack I'm wearing a backpack and I kind of look back to see what it is and it's not only is it all the rope that they use to rope off that area but there's these metal posts that are steadily being shot out of the ground because I'm yanking them out of the ground but it's it's, it's like bringing me to a halt and bringing me to a sudden halt because either I got to where the rope was tied off on trees or one of those anchors was deep in the earth because suddenly oh, I get pulled off my skis flying through the air and I land on my back uh, knocking the wind out of me and just spinning sideways people are skiing down this way and I'm sp spinning across uh, the front of them. Um, so there's there's yelling and there's mayhem and I can't breathe. And I'm just laying there. Uh, trail Also trailing her long rope all the way across uh, the trail as well. And uh, I was like, well, I'm busted. They got me. Uh, except uh, no one, no one, they didn't get me. I, I totally got away scot-free. Uh, totally disrupted the other uh, uh, trail. And uh, eventually got my air back and uh, slowly skied uh, back to uh, uh, back to my car. So uh, th so there you go, my uh, my heroic uh, and foolish attempt uh, to uh, outdistance uh, ski patrol. Uh, my experience with uh, dealing with an angel and uh, a little telepathy. So uh, that's for uh, Team Taser Bigfoot and for Warbles. Warbles, pleasure to hang out on your, your back stoop and hear about uh, this, your stories. Fascinating. And uh, I'll see you in the tubes.